everybody this is Pam at the paper outpost and here we are we're playing with ugly scrapbook paper turning it pretty okay so this is what it looked like when it's done and it started off looking something along the lines of this which I wasn't that excited about maybe you have some scrapbook paper that you're not that excited about and I'm always trying to think of ways that we can turn stuff that we have into something we're excited about so this did excite me this morning. I know it doesn't take much, but it, and it's a really simple process. Anybody can do it and it uses very basic supplies. Okay, so um, uh, let's just, and and my great strat, my great strategy, my great process of not waiting until it's dry. Okay, will come into play here. And it's actually gonna work to our advantage today. I know, I know, very excited about that. So here's a close up look at it. Just something fun could be used for any season, maybe fall. Um, it could also be used in junk journals as the cover or, I mean, you would have to put it on something. But um, uh, this isn't a thick piece of scrap of paper, it's just a regular thin one. So it could be cut up into pockets and tucks and journal cards and all sorts of fun things so let's make some fun paper out of some not so pretty paper okay this this and I know everybody feels differently about different paper and some of you feel that paper has emotions and we don't want to hurt its feelings but this paper and I had a long talk before we started and it said it was okay to transform it into something else we carry forward all right so some I'm gonna use a white gesso today which is basically it's a white acrylic paint but it works kind of like a flat um, latex house paint if you have that it'll probably work too or if you just have these little bottles of paint I get these sometimes at the thrift store apparently at the Dollar Tree do not Dollar Tree the like Walmart and stuff like that they're not very expensive easy to supply for most folks okay so the first thing I did was I took okay let me just dry this off because I was in the I did put two little water baths here so I have something to rinse my brushes off. You should put something behind your paper so you don't muck up your mat. I'm skipping that step because I'm a lazy crafter. Okay, so now I'm just basically taking gesso, which is white paint, and um, uh, the it's I'm just using it as white paint here. I guess the original purpose for gesso is truly to prime your canvas uh, to give it some tooth so that your paints and things like that can stick better, but I'm, I'm just using it for white paint, okay? And I'm not c completely covering everything, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm gonna wipe it all up after, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm getting it all over the place now. I was neater the first time around, that's all, all I'm saying. Um, things were going well. Okay, I'm gonna put that in my water bath all as well. Okay, now we could sit here for an hour and watch paint to dry, but we all know how fun that is. So I thought to myself, well, what can I do as I'm sitting here waiting for paint to dry? I could grab a stencil and I could put it on top of the wet paint. I know, I know, but it's going to help it adhere a little bit before it gets stuck. Maybe I can have some fun with it. So I grabbed one of those, you know one of these, it's a makeup blending sponge. They sell them in bags at the different stores and you know, maybe you have some hanging around. Did you really need 45? I mean, really, did you? Um, and so I squirted some, not that one, I squirted some burnt umber, umber appleberry acrylic paint onto something extremely fancy, a piece of paper. So I had something to work on off of. Oh yes, there's the long guy. Hello, long guy. No, you missed a spot really close to my window here. Please come and get that. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's coming back to get that now. So this is kind of helping this stick down. And I'm just using this as a sponger. It's kind of nice because it almost makes its own handle and it easily bops paint into the stencils. Very easy to stencil things with this little guy. I don't know why I've never thought about this thing before, but um, I'm sure other people are using this thing to stencil and I'm probably the last to you know, realize it's a great stencil tool. But it gets the job done fast. It's fun. This process is fun. I will, I will let you know that I, I am in like crafter bunny heaven here just pouncing I'm pouncing what could be more fun than pouncing paint this takes no skill no talent just a willing heart and a few basic supplies some paint a funny little sponge and if you don't have that sponge get a makeup sponge or some kind of other sponge and you do 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 you don't have anything else grab some paper towel try that it'll probably work too um, remember never let lack of this craft supply stop you very important. Go in with that in the back of your mind, in the front of your mind. 
I'm just making these a little darker. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and gingerly peel it off. And then we're gonna go on and move this and do the other parts of it. So it came out pretty good, right? So far, so good. Okay, but still doesn't look like what we finished with. How'd you get there, Pam? All right, okay, settle down. Just breathe, it's gonna be okay. All right, uh, that looks like a good spot. And we'll keep pouncing. So how's your day going? Are you having fun? Are you playing with your papers? Sometimes I just want to play with paper. I don't want to construct anything. I don't want to make anything. I want no pressure. I want low pressure, maximum fun, um, enjoyment, oops, messiness, that kind of playing. I've got gold paint on my finger now. Um, playing in a mud pile sort of feeling. Um, that's what I'm doing today. I'm just going to get messy and play with these colors. And this is just fun for me. I don't know. Um, I could do this all day. I could make a hundred of these and I would be a little pig in a dirt pile. Yeah, that's what I would be. <laughs> all right. Oh, I think that just comes out so cool. So I'm just filling in these empty spots that I see here and there. I'm you know, rotating my little leaves so I get some coverage. And it's amazing how much this sponge <laughs> works like a sponge. It actually does soak up a lot of color so you have lots of pouncing ability out of one redab. Well, that's working out really nice. Isn't it great when things work ah! out really nice? Okay, I got that all over my clothing. That's why you should wear uh, special art or craft clothing uh, um, or hazmat suit or whatever you have handy so that nothing gets on or in your body that shouldn't be there. It's just pure crafting pleasure. That's it. Uh, this way, like that. Okay. There we go. All right. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Pounce, 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 pounce. All right. See. Whoops. Lost some stencils. And maybe let me turn this around. I'll just get this little lower area here. I do like these little guys. I don't have to lay down flat. You can pounce right through them and they come out okay. It's pretty cool. All right. Pounce, 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 pounce. pounce. And then, so the whole thing is, we're not really waiting for anything to dry, bone dry. We're just carrying on. And we do need to wash that stencil. Um, and I found that if I use a, chi a chicken scrubby, no, a kitchen scrubby that is dedicated to this purpose and not used for kitchen um, dishes, but you just use that under the water and it'll just take it off the plastic thing. But don't wait forever because it might not <laughs> after a while. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to take the nub end this is the nub end, this is the chub end. This is the nub end, and I took some gold paint. This is 50 cent from the thrift store, Craft Smart, probably El Cheapo, um, Walmart style paint, nothing fancy. And my first idea, because I didn't know what I was doing, was, and I, I want to show you exactly what I did on the other one, so we'll, we'll see how that works. Um, take the nub end, dab it in the paint, and then I, I, I went to put these, what I thought were going to be these really cool little circles, Oh, oop, got a lot there. It's okay. Doot, doot, doot. Um, and I was just kind of like, I don't know, en enhancing. And, and <clears throat> because it's a rubbery kind of sponge, it doesn't give me the actual dots I was hoping for. So I thought, well, maybe I should get a different tool. Maybe I should switch to a brush. The million and one ways you could do this. There's really no rules or laws or nothing like that. Nothing official. No, no, no. Um, but I just did put a bunch of gold paint down, dub, 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 And now here's where the the excitement happened. Have you ever watched any of those videos on how to put on foundation with one of these? And all you hear is, all right, you apply your foundation and then you blend, 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 blend. All you have to do is blend, 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 blend. So I thought, why can't I blend, 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 blend with what I put down here? I had no idea what was going to happen. And let's just let's just see what happens. I'm going back a little bit into the brown paint. And at first I thought, I'm just gonna pounce around the edges, picking up the gold paint, the brown paint. I wasn't too fussy. I was just kind of giving it a border, hewing it, um, giving it a little vignette -y sort of look. I don't know what I was doing, honestly. And uh, just going along, pounce, 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 pounce. Okay. And then I thought, you know, those circles of gold, they look a little bit circly. So then I thought instead of leaving them that as, as that, I would smear them. 
So I came along and I started smearing them in these little wispy, wispy ways, random, not really thinking about what I was doing, just sort of doing this. And I thought, well, that's interesting, you know, um, just trying a different technique, uh, putting this in here. Okay. And I thought, okay, well, I've done that. What can I do next to this lovely little paper that is at its, uh, it's at its mercy. Or I'm, somebody's at somebody's mercy here to make this. And then I thought, well, why don't I just go in and get some more brown paint a little bit and maybe even add a little bit of water so it spreads really well, just pounce, pounce. And then pounce around. I'm going to blend, 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 blend. Blending my foundation into itself so that I have a uniform, beautiful uh, color of um, this paper is transforming from a, I'm going back from to the paint into a little bit of water, dabbing off any excess water. And then I am just blend, 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 everything together. So things are sort of layered and hidden behind the, the multiple, and this is just fun again. We've entered the fun zone. Let me tell you, I'm just taking this hoot nanny of a disaster of a piece of craft scrap paper not one I never liked. I avoided it like the plague. Every time I passed by it, I, I, my innards went, ugh, you know, like, ugh, I don't like you. I'm not excited that you're here. I, I don't know who invited you into the building. But now things are changing before our eyes. And we are just making something that really doesn't look anything like the original paper. It has a little bit of the background peeping through, so it's a little different than if I would have used um, a blank, a you know, white piece of paper. But you could totally do this technique on a white piece of paper if you don't have scrapbook paper. Use what you got. Remember, always use what you got. If you don't, and if you still can't figure it out, you can always go buy more stuff. But you don't have to. That's what I kind of want to let you know. Is you can transform things that look nothing, nothing. I tell you, like what they were originally designed to look like and now they look like something kind of spectacular you can go back in with more gold okay let's say let's let's use the nubby end not the chubby end i'm going to put a little more gold on here you may want to you know do a little more golding that's fine i i just had another idea too maybe we're going to take this up a level okay i'm going to blend 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 put a little more gold hewing in there it's going to be not so dotty but it's going to this great foundation blending technique somehow with this magic tool it's all going to do that but then I thought, then I thought, what if I took, I don't know, a different stencil on top and then went in straight with the gold? I'm gonna, should I use the butt? I think I should use the butt again. Maybe I'll use a different one. I don't know if this will make a difference. We're going to try. I'm going to go into the gold. This is new. We're going out on the edge here. Don't know what's going to happen. This is a dry sponge. No water here. I want concentrated color. Um, dab, 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 dab. And let's see what we get because this could turn out to be spectacular or meh we don't know until we're done but I, I think it's going to be nice I mean who doesn't love butterflies even if they're they're intense butterflies or they're soft butterflies they're still butterflies and butterflies are a go in my book and I know that they're likely a go in your book too because um you buy a lot of my digi kits with the butterflies on them so that's that's what I'm thinking is that we're butterfly people we're flower people. Well, we could be any kind of people. I mean, but you know, there's, hey, butterflies are just darn adorable. Um, you know, it's funny. A lot of people don't like insects, but you put pretty wings on it and all of a sudden they're your best friend. Or it's like a, uh, um, my friend used to say rats are, or squirrels are rats with tails. And I thought that was kind of funny because really, yeah, they're uh, everybody like, you know, not like a lot of people, but I don't know. There are people who don't like rats, but they like squirrels. And um, not a whole lot of difference. Cuter little, I don't know, maybe they both have cute faces. Um, uh, I like them both, I think they're cute. And almost done here. Now you could also do this with the white. That might look cool too. So I'm gonna try this first pass. Just we have extra time and I'm, I'm goofing. And it's only a piece of paper. So remember if you totally botch it, it's only a piece of ugly scrapbook paper you didn't like anyway. So it's okay. It's okay to totally botch it. Oh, I might have botched it there because I put a lot of paint down there. Okay, let's just see what happens. Let's peel this off now. Whoop. Oh, that, that did come out kind of cool, I have to admit. Um, can you see that? 
You kind of put it up and give you some light on it. It does look really pretty. Really pretty. Um, there's um, like lawn guys out back, and Sunny has something to say about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and turn it upside down. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the white if we contrast this with the white. All right, so let me get some other sponge. I'm gonna try this sponge. I haven't tried this sponge yet. It's a little, it's a little harder, firmer. I think it's. I don't know, some kind of other sponge. We're just going to try it, see if it works. I've dipped it in the white gesso, and we're going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try together. And see, maybe the white will show up more strongly, which will be cool, too. A little more white. Doo -doo. And you can just keep layering and layering and layering. I mean, there's really no... Until you say stop, you are the master of the stop moment. So you can keep having fun. You could even sprinkle glitter on this and just make it glittery on top. You could totally do that. Okay. Just maybe we're gonna try that. I don't know. I'm gonna try that. It's gonna be messy. But you know, it's one of those days where we're we're going hog wild. Alright, we will peek at this and see what it looks like first. And then maybe we'll try some glitter on it, see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Oh, that looks very nice, and that pops really nicely, doesn't it? Now, I could probably never get that exactly over again, but it might not matter with the, the glitter. Let me try some glitter. I've got some pink glitter. I don't know, it's just the first one I grabbed, so... And I'm always trying to figure out a way to use this stuff up. So while the paint is still dry, we'll try... I don't know, this could be a disaster. Probably. Close that up, at least we've used some of our glitter. All right, then we're just gonna lift it up and see what happened. Oh boy, oh Nelly, will it stick to the paint? I don't know, we'll have to wait till it dries. Oh, but it did stick to the paint here. Go in a little closer so you can see. Uh, can you see the glitter on there? It looks kind of pretty, it does. All right, put you back where you belong. Okay, get in the right position. Okay, hold on. I gotta wash my, I gotta wash these off before all of this sticks. Okay, so I want to show you that I did. I cleaned them. Okay, I know that one looks dirty, but that's old stuff that I didn't clean. The side I cleaned, clean, clean. See, so, and it really, it does make short work of it when you use the um, kitchen scrubby. Um, so kind of remember that, tuck that idea in the back of your head, but just denote it as only for scrubbing paint off. And so I'm going to set this to side to dry. And I'll just show you the other one in comparison. So this is without anything done to it. And the other one was with. So you kind of get an idea there. And I'm going to see if I can get this paint off before anything happens. Now I have this leftover paint. Oh yeah, now come closer, long guy. I can't quite hear you. Yeah, no, no, I can still hear myself think. Keep coming. Keep coming. A little closer. Oh, forgot to wash this off. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And now I've got some leftover paint. So I, I'm just grabbing some book pages that I might want to use it up on. And there's going to be really no rhyme or reason other than getting the paint on the pages. Whatever that looks like is what it's going to look like. Here we go. All right, just put some pages out here. All right, um, let's see if I have anything left on here a little bit. Okay, I'll do this guy with a background like that. That's kind of pretty and kind of cool. It's like a, a bubble page almost. That's kind of neat. So that's how simple it can be to decorate paper like that. But now we've got this stuff. So what do we do with that? We could use fancy brushes. Here's a fancy brush. Um, maybe just do some streaking. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Just random stuff. Might be used for backgrounds, maybe for altered paper clips. I don't know. I don't know at this point. It's, it's just me having fun using up the paint instead of letting it go to waste like it might be on here. So I think I'm going to come in here and just moosh it so I get every little drop on. Maybe I don't need 45 pages. Okay. And then I'm going to come in maybe with the brown and moosh it. Oh, I got some of the paper. Look, that's kind of interesting. Okay, I have no idea what's going on with this, but it doesn't really matter. It's all good. Um, yeah, okay, there's a little more paint there, a little more paint there. 
It's just kind of using up what's what's still here. Um, there's a little bit of wetness to everything. That's okay. Maybe I'm going to fold it together and see what I get. You know, it's kind of like a Rorschach test. Who knows what it's going to look like when it's done, right? There, we kind of spread that. That's sort of pretty. It's like birds flying or something. I can I can roll with that. Um, I'm going to close this because I'm saying I'm done with that. And I'm done with this one. And I'm done with this one. So those are all away. I don't, I'm not going to bring the glitter back here. I'm just going to put more of this down just to give it more of an edging. And I would say that I did a good job using up the extra paint. Oh, I can even, if I go to the sides, I can get even more off because there's more buildup on the inside. And Okay, this isn't about being cheap and trying to use every little bit of your scrap supplies, but craft supplies, but why not? Why not use it if we can use it, right? Now this is aging it almost like an old weathered, you know, piece of, I wonder if we can do this with the inks. Will that work? I don't know. Let's try it. I don't know if they'll stick. I feel like I want a green one here. Let me, oh, of course, green is at the very bottom. Hang on, it's going to take me seven years to get it out. I got it. This is a uh, peeled paint. Now what's going to happen if I stick the chubby end to the peeled paint? Probably nothing. Let me wet it a bit. Okay, I probably have greeny brown peeled paint now. Okay. Oh, it's got some greeny hue in it. It definitely does. And you can put like a daub here or there. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It could just be like partial. That's kind of cool. And then maybe, just maybe, we want to do something with the black. I got to find the black. Hold on. There it is. All right. May, what, what are you doing all cockard? Okay, I'm going to put this this way so you can see better. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Whoop, don't be wiggling out of my little desk arm. Okay, there you go. Stay still. Okay. So, um, what else can you do with this? I think you can stamp on it. That's what I think. So, I'm just going to take a basic stamp. I'm going to get a big one. I'm going to get a big one. You could do little stamps and stamp, stamp, stamp. But today, I, I feel like... I don't know. Maybe I'm not even going to stamp. I'm going to stick with stenciling. I'm going to take this rose stencil. And I'm going to see if I can stencil black. I can't really ruin black, can I? Let's see. <laughs> this is Black Soot Regular Distress Ink. Oh boy, when they're your own toys and you and you can do anything you want with them and nobody can yell at you. Hmm. Yeah, I know. All right, let me try this actually. All right, here we go. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I need more. Can you, you can't see that. There we go. Okay, more intense. More intense. Could have gone white too. Wet white with the paint. Could have done that. As an alternative. All right, let's see how it goes. Maybe it's just going to be shadowy. Not going to be super intense. I think if I used a distress oxide, it would come out more intense. Maybe I'm going to ferret around and see if I can find a distress oxide one. Okay. Okay, let's lift up and see if we're getting anything. Oh, we are getting something. So it's a nice background sort of look. Let me get an oxide and see what that does. Here's a... Oh, I really should use a different dauber. Um, fossilized amber. I, th some people do this. I've seen this done. So they don't pollinate, cross-pollinate the colors. They'll do something like, oh, I'm just going to put this down here. And then I'm going to spritz it with a little water. And now I've activated it. Now I can load on here. And then I can come over here with my stencil and transfer the yellow that way. Let's try that. I never do that. I always mess up my, my ink pads. Well, let's see. Let's see if it gets us anywhere in life. I don't know, maybe I should have used more of a contrasting color. But the, the oxides do this well. I'm, I'm not going to add water. I'm just going to pick up the straight oxide color and pounce. This is the most amazing tool. Everybody, run out and buy one of these, like, tomorrow, today. Drop everything you're doing and go get this spongy thing. You probably have one already. Who are we kidding? You've been, you've been blending and blending and blending the foundation. No, okay, you don't wear makeup? All right, that's fine. But you've seen those videos. You know what I'm, I'm talking about? Um... Maybe you haven't. Um, maybe you don't care about makeup. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. But maybe you've got an awesome crafting tool in your makeup supply section. Okay, let's see what we got now. Okay, do you see the difference here? Oh, okay. So it's like a, a, a rose of a different color. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it's got a lot of 
a black and brown mixed into that lovely yellow color, but I'm getting like a different look. It's actually really kind of cool. So I guess what I'm saying is there's never ending fun with paper. That's, that's my message, my take home message today. Put the right lids on, Pam. Get Mr. Snuffles up for his moment. Oh, oh, what do I gotta tell you? Gotta tell you that there's March Madness special going on at the Paper Outpost Etsy shop. Here is the link. 50% off all downloadable, printable digi kits at home. That's right, 50% off all of them. There's over 260 kits to pick from birds. Victorian, dragonfly, butterfly, all sorts of kinds. And if you're looking for a link that will show you all of my links, no matter what device you're on, this is the master link, which will show you all of my links to my free monthly email newsletter, my um, uh, Amazon shop, Etsy shop, merchandise shop, all my social media, all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, fluffers. Come here, it's, it's day time. He was, he was kind of, he was coming close. He wasn't on the couch snoozing. No. Hello, everybody. I just want you to know that this is Sunshine, Cub Pup Reporter, reporting to you from, um, not with the ears, not with the ears. Um, okay, I was coming on my own. I was not, I, she didn't have to go get, well, I'm leaving, bye. <laughs> but I'm back. Because I didn't like what she was doing with my ears. Okay, so, I'm back. I'm here to report that everything is fine, and I was advancing of my own free will to come and do my pup date. So my pup date today is an update on my pup date. My pup date is of my own free will. I am not asked, well, no, she does ask me. Um, I am not coerced, that's the word this journalist was looking for. I am not coerced, I am not bribed by treats, I am fulfilled by my pursuit, my deep pursuit of the pup date world and I'm letting you know the antics that goes on at the paper outpost. Sunshine, are you like little sneaky backdoor journalist reporter? You know, you're like, you know, like revealing like the deep, dark, hidden secrets of what really goes on at the paper outpost? Maybe. Uh-huh. And do these stories usually involve you? Yes. Okay. And chicken? Always. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Okay. So we're, we're a little self-focused today. Maybe a smidge, but there's nothing wrong with that because who doesn't need a little more sunshine in their life? Okay. Thank you, Sunny. All right. Why don't you just sign off now? Okay. <laughs> sunshine? Out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go, folks. That's how it goes sometimes. And, um, oh, let me show you. These have dried a little bit more so you can kind of get the full mm -hmm. effect of the prettiness of the glitter on the white butterfly, butterflies. And the gold butterflies are very pretty. Okay, so that's that. And then the original one is now pretty much dry and looks like, oh, I should back up so you can actually see. Looks like that. So, fun times. Here, just goofing with paper. I thought you might like to come along and just goof with the paper with me. So thank you. Thank you very much for spending your time here. And I hope you're having fun just goofing around with, with your papers too because there is much fun to be had um, with these lovely pieces of paper. So take care, everybody, and transform your ugly scrapbook paper into something wonderful. Take care. And remember, it's only paper. Uh, Remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Take care. Bye.